hello, hello, hello. Stop forcing me to watch other streams whenever I click on Twitch. Stop, we're not doing that. I'm gonna mute that for a second. Alrighty, alrighty. We can do now. Is, uh, behind this. Discord and attack people with this. Yes, it does. All right. Hop in here, General Forkery. Spam that there. General, put this here. VGDC. Yeah. I'm gonna go to game dev chat. Bam, put this here. Alrighty, alrighty. We've assaulted people that I know with links. Now we're back. I see gluten is here. What is good, gluton? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I just assaulted people with links, and now I think we are all ready to go. We'll listen to myself real quick. And I'd say we're all good. Um, all right. Uh, I'm gonna give it a half second to see if people pop in. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna look at these other fantastic examples from Mirror, because that's what we're gonna be using today for multiplayer. Uh, I have no idea what these other ones are. We're gonna go to Discovery. I don't know what that is. Let's play Discovery. Should be a multiplayer game that it has as a default example. Oh. Oh. Uh. Start server. Oh. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> I don't know what this one is. I don't know what most of these are. I guess we're gonna go play Pong by ourselves. Nice. Alright guys, welcome to the stream. Today we're playing Pong without the ball or the opponent. Yes, the Discovery Channel, Ethan. It is definitely that. Thank you for helping out. I, I wouldn't have done it without you, honestly. I uh, have uh, Ethan, you can go ahead and pop on to uh, Pong if you want to challenge me in multiplayer, yeah. Yes, yes, thank you, Ethan. Um, why is, I can't rotate. Oh, that's right, I'm in a different, I'm in Unity, I should know how to do this. Let's just make sure, let's just do one last useful thing. Ah, uh, yes. Actually, wait, I don't know where this is. We're just gonna, nice. Oh, what? What is it? Why can't I see it? You know, I don't even care. 
1v1 absolutely just pop in pop in the pop in the pong that you totally do not have a build of and couldn't play with me and i don't have an, a port open for you to play it with me in the first place i'm down okay <clears throat> default scenes open bulb i don't know what you're referring to can't help you with that But, oh, wait. All right, so, uh, first step of game dev, find a tutorial, and then just bump up the play speed to, um, uh, 1.75. Um, I don't do two times, because two times it's hard to hear, and I did the math, like, usually have, like, no time jumping from 0.75 to 2 in most video lengths, so that's my trick. Okay, so hello, welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some multiplayer using Mirror in Unity. In the previous right. video, I showed you guys right. where it was, how it works, and we looked at Whoa. the example project, and also I showed you how to go get it in the asset store and install it. Whoa. Set up in Unity. And for the next I did videos, watch Mirror, that. I'm going to be explaining different concepts, how they work, and doing some little examples. So in today's okay. video, we're going to be okay. looking at ownership, how to know whether a certain object on the network belongs to you, belongs to other players, is on the server only, and all those Probably if it has a name tag. So this video will be split up into three parts. Part one will be setting up the scene, putting in the network Whoa. manager, making sure we've got everything we need. Got it, two, got it. We'll be creating the player and adding all the components we need to the player. I, I, Minecraft Steve. For the player, our custom script. That'll handle some logic for movement. I hope you guys are excited. Let's get into it. Uh, so in the previous video, nice. we were setting up the GitHub repository for this project, and GitHub was actually down at the time, but now it's back up and it's on there. So if you hmm. guys need it, you can go to my uh, link in the description to go to yeah, that's funny. my repository. There are multiple tutorials, and then inside assets, we've got uh, tutorials. Inside there, we've got today's, which is ownership. It's all about ownership. And then when I make more, they'll come in here too. I'm not using GitHub. Source code there if you need it. So in this video, there's not much coding. I'm actually just going to be doing it all on camera. I'm not going to be skipping anything. Step one, as we said, we want to make sure the scene setup. So you guys, all right, all right, uh, all right. don't need these necessarily, but I like using them. I know a lot of people do. I've used some empty game objects to separate the different things in the scene. So the system, too much work. Network manager. We're going to need to stick on the network manager component, which I can. Was that an empty? He said. Empty game objects to separate the different things in the scene. Okay. So the systems, I put the network manager. We're gonna need to stick on the network. Okay. Yeah. I. I. So we gonna create an empty <laughs> network manager. Bam. Add component. Network man. Bam. <laughs> and all the code has arrived. All right. That is very, very fast. But speaking of it's, yes, it is the ultimate strat. Uh, yeah, oh, I do that, Ethan. I totally do that, too, with the lectures as well. Lectures, I, ca I can't watch lectures without... Um, it's a video I'm assigned. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. The best trick is, is uh, in case you miss this, Jenna, you don't play it at two times speed. You play it at 1.75 and possibly 1.5 because two times speed just gets hard to comprehend, but 1.75 is... Uh, you don't save much time between 2 and 1.75 as much as you do from 1 to 1.75 or 1. Just, just proportions you save very little time bumping it up to f actually 2 so the comprehensibility of 1.75 is worth like the one minute you'll lose it's not much time you lose in most videos so I always do 1.75 master strat and, uh, apparently I'm also a reaction channel now so yeah yeah I feel that <laughs> I know, I know what you're talking about, Ethan. The place they upload it there, yeah. I, 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 I usually I just watch it at two at that point if they don't want me to do point seven five. Yes, I hate that. Manager component, which I covered last video a bit, but this is so much to it. I can't. You know, it'll need a video to explain what it is and what it does because it does so much stuff. But effectively, yes, it it's like you connect as a client or a server, you change some settings. You wow. to override this to actually add custom logic to it. But for the sake of our demo, we don't actually need to override anything. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Which is the network manager HUD, which is going to show us when we press play. Yeah, network manager HUD. The network manager gets a hat now. All right, we have a the game. The, the manager has a hat. Right. We're gonna have an actual video. I'm sorry. What video? What video does that intent include of that you're gonna have ready? I'm interested, but I don't know what you're talking about at the moment just yet. I don't remember you talking about making a video, but I'm excited. All right. Does our network have a hat? I think it does. Nice. That's a cool hat. All right, back to being a reaction channel. If we take a second, in the corner we get that little UI stuff. If you've used Unity multiplayer before, uh, it's the same thing. It's a button for host, client, or server only. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna be a host, and we're gonna build a game. And... Rather than a forefront video. <laughs> what the frick does that even mean, Ethan? It's not about my. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 oh! Animatic for that thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. That's cool. 
clients so that we can play against ourselves to pick up this for the demo. But effectively, yeah, that's it. It's a network manager. We don't really care about players or IPs or anything right now. It all works fine for testing locally. The only thing we care about is setting the player program, right, which is right. the next step. But the other thing you need to make sure for this example is that your camera is aiming in the uh, Z direction or the Z direction. So the blue arrow. Camera is aiming in the Z direction. Camera. Which way are you facing, bud? Uh, <laughs> nice. He's doing that. Hey, yo, what's good, absolute cutie striped monkey? Thanks for popping in, bucko. Uh, and I'm excited to see your video, Jenna. I'm sure it is absolutely perfect. Um, I'm, I'm excited. Our relevance is on global rather than local. In this direction is where it should be aiming, because I'm going to spawn players in and make them move off in that direction so we can see what's going on. And yeah, we can move on to step two now and make them right. So step two, let's make a player, let's go and create an empty, let's make a sphere actually for the player, okay? Oh, wow, he juked me out there, I about created an empty. <sighs> sphere. Here they are, let's just reset them. So the player is going to be called player, and set player tag. <laughs> Whoa. Just because. Whoa. What we want to do is, we want to take off the collider, because there's collisions in this. Step. Oh gosh, that got to do multiple steps, like he went fast there. Player. Uh, player. Uh, he said, what? No collider? Why? Okay. I'm sorry. I know what I have to do. But I don't know if I have the strength to do it. <laughs> Alright, back to going. Hello. And we want to actually add a custom script for the player, which I've already made, but it's got nothing in it. So if I go over here and drag on this play script, there is, as I said, no code in here. Yeah. No code in here. Let's go. S. Are we going to be nice and actually organize? <laughs> That's funny. We're just putting everything in here. Uh, later. We'll organize later. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, paying for unity. Wait, let's see. That's a lot of messages. I'm ex regardless, I'm excited to see your video. Uh, yes. I. <laughs> Dark theme unity is definitely. Wait, what? Oh, wait. Dark theme unity is free. If like recently they changed that, I don't know. I think that if that doesn't sound familiar. That was paid for, but it is free now. I haven't paid for unit anything for unity just yet. And yes, if you've already headed out, or if you haven't headed out, good night, Jenna. Thank you for popping by. Europe. Yes, yes, for real. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. That's that's synced up pretty well. If you responded that quick, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's free now. Um, what the frick am I looking at? Go away. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're very, very excited for the fact that dark mode is free. But yes, it's it's free. <laughs> well, I feel like with game dev, that's one... Oh, why is he over there? Why are you over here, my son? <laughs> Back to the center, you must go. Yes, go to sleep. Yes, you draw your Minecraft stuff. <laughs> Ethan, you need to be a mod. Do you need to be a mod, Ethan, so you can, like, you can enforce the laws that I do definitely don't have in place. Oh, no, oh, no numbers. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Ever, all right. Be nice to Jenna. She's going to bed. You can be mean to her when she's gonna stay around for longer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, was I supposed to do something? I don't. Rem okay. Yoink. Nice. Do I have anything else open here? Nope. Okay. Go to sleep. Goodbye. Yes, thank you. I don't know what you're saying exactly that, Joe. I'm just going to act like I agree. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, I'm tired. Yeah, yep. Go to sleep. Go, just leave. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to go back to being a reaction channel. Wow. Wow. Uh, wait, wait, why didn't he have the- Oh, he's just gonna show what happens, okay. <laughs> now I'm messing, Jenna. You're probably still here, considering you didn't say bye again, but you can go. Go to sleep. 
Echo. What? Is there an echo? Oh, you're echo. What the? What is this wrong with you, Ethan? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's... Okay, we go across to the network manager. It wants a player prefab, which is what it spawns in when a client joins. So okay. We actually do want that again. Let's drag in the player. It's not nice. gonna like it. It's gonna say player prefab oh. have a network identity. A network okay. identity is you know how um, wow. player knows what is what on the network. Thank you. Who and all that so if we go to the Thank you for showing me that it network says network that there's a problem by not doing it properly. Okay, so on the player, we want to add a uh, network identity. Okay. Yep. Network identity. Uh, dink. Net. I probably right, don't ask. That was already there. I don't care. Network identity. Bam. Alrighty, alrighty. Save. And just by adding that, we can now go to the network manager and add the player prefab. So wait, oh, did you just save the prefab up here? Okay. Is that possible? Save. Uh, uh, no, wait, what? Oh, it's not. Stop moving so fast. Okay, so Why would you move so fast? Uh, I want to hit the frick do you click up here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Overrides. Da -da 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 -da. Apply all. And just by adding that, we can now go to the network manager oh. and add the player prefab. So this is Didn't know that was a thing. Cool. Ah. Uh, so I can, now that I have my player prefab with the network identity, I can just yoink. Yoink! There's our player prefab. You didn't fix the error. I didn't create the error, you person. Ah, uh, what's next? Oh yeah, uh, network manager and player prefab. Yoink! is something the network, uh, well, the network manager can now spawn, okay? The server can spawn this object, and whoever it spawns it for can actually um, have ownership, okay? By, you can check on the network identity who owns it, okay, whether you okay. own it, or you have authority to do so. And that's what we need to be okay. doing, so let's actually move on now to write the play script. All right, okay, player. Okay, we're going to write a script to move the player. So we're going to say, Ooh. service field, private, vector-free movement. Okay, okay. Just okay. So it in the inspector. And then we want, in the update function, uh, to basically say, uh, if we don't press spacebar, so if input, if not input, get you down, he code space. This is just a really simple example, as I said. Return if we don't press space, but if we do press space, then transform.translate. What in tarnation? So we're saying move that much in that direction uh, every time we press space. What? In tarnate? What? Why? Wait, let me see if I can figure out how this works. In the update, which I also dislike, wouldn't you want to use fixed update for moving? Interesting. Alberto says you to fix the error of. You need to spell words. <laughs> it says to fix the error of your canceled. I don't know what the heck you're talking about. If you'd like to explain it, I can fix it, but I don't think there was a problem. Now time to analyze whatever the heck I'm looking at. Oh, oh wait, so it's only, things only gonna move when you're holding space. Okay, so this isn't like a jump or anything. I thought it was usually, okay. Transform to translate movement. Okay, that's interesting. Well, do I want to write this code? No. Now, problem with this is quite a few problems, okay, that we're gonna solve. So oh, okay, I, I was right, look at that. I paused right before we said there's a problem. I meant echo. What? Is there an echo? I'm confused. Is there an actual echo? Let me listen to myself one second. Nah, can confirm. I heard myself without an echo. I don't know what you're talking about. Y'all, that's, that's... Get that cringe out of my chat. I don't know what y'all are doing. This would run on every client, because every client would have many players, and they'd all press space, or when they press space, all of the things would move. But we want only, oh. um, you, we only want your input to affect your player, and we also yeah. need sync movement, because this won't actually sync across the clients. So the way... That's definitely not the problem I was thinking, but it definitely is a problem. These guys are useless. Yes, there is an echo. I don't hear an echo at all. Like, I I know I, I don't have, like... Like, I'm just sitting in my room. I don't have, like, stuff on the walls and things to, like... You're muted. What? What do you mean you're... you're Ethan, you can screw up. Oh, 
Oh, oh, we're screwing with you. Thank you, Noah. Okay, I didn't realize. I missed that message. Ethan, you can just suck right off. Um, but thank you, Noah. And, uh, Alberto, it seems like you were late to the joke. Noah, I'm just going to believe you at this point. Continuing on. We're going to do that. We've got two ways I'm going to show you today. And the first one is going to be by using a component that comes with mirror that syncs transforms. Or syncs his position, basically. All right, all right. So we go back to the player, and we want to add a network transform. Okay. Whoa. Network transform. We added a new hat. So that's network transform, and this component will sync across the network where this object is. So I'm gonna go put that in there. Thank you. I, uh, I will. Oh, 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 oh. I don't care. So client authority is whether the client has the authority to move this object. If it's false, it means only the server is allowed to move it. So for now, we're gonna say yes, the client has authority, which you don't want most of the time. But for the sake no. of this, you know, it's fine. And if your game isn't, if you aren't worrying about cheating, then you can allow the player to move themselves. But at the end of the day, if you're making a competitive game, then you definitely want to validate movement yourself. As the server, rather than the client do it. Oh, no. I well, vibing into that button, I guess. I have the stream. Oh, I'm just being a pain. I have the stream muted elsewhere. Can y'all like? I mean, I, memes gone on long enough. This is a meme, but I have. I see that my computer is muted. That I used to check. So stop. <laughs> I know that's a meme on other people's, like, like streams, but, like, for real, let me just stream. <laughs> I won't listen to y'all later if y'all ain't gonna actually help now. <laughs> Not gonna change anything else there. By default now, this object will uh, be synced across clients, but the same problem is still here, which is that you control all of the uh, things. You only want to control your own. So before we even check if you press a key, we want to only do this method um, if you have authority of this object. Now, currently, we're inheriting from one behavior. We need to actually inherit from network behavior. Okay? And that allows us to access. All right. Okay, well, I don't hear an echo. I don't know what the heck you're talking about. There is no echo. Wait. Okay, there's only one input here. The... What is your problem? Oh my gosh. <sighs> testing, testing, testing. I don't hear an echo. What are you hearing? Mute myself now. There is no echo whatsoever. Refresh the stream. <laughs> Let me just, let's just do a double check right now because I heard a comment that sounded like a suspicion. Give me just half a second here. Do, 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 do. Okay, y'all are all in the same freaking Discord call watching my stream. Noah. And Noah's on my side here, which means it's not just them two memeing together still at the same time. Uh, I'm continuing on. Noah, if you can figure out what the problem is, I'm listening to you and only you. So, moving on. That's whether we have authority. So if we have authority, we, well, if we don't have authority, sorry, we return. This is interesting. I've seen people do this before. I don't, I, I've never seen the appeal of, like, checking things and just returning in a function. As opposed to just, like, saying, like, if this and this do this. There might be something more safe about this, but I'm not sure. Which means that we end up only actually... Oh, I never added the thingy I was supposed to do. Uh, that work. Meanwhile, I act like I have to do that, but I haven't copied any of the other code yet. ...checking input on the ones we have authority for, which is our play. Equally, we can also add this client tag. I'm not sure if this is actually necessary, but it means that this method only uh, gets called on a client. We don't need the server to run this code. This is only on clients, okay? I'll do that too. I'll like write the actual code in like half a second. Can I spell client right, please? And then now this should actually work. If we actually go and build the game, we'll be able to move. But there's still a slight problem, which we'll be sorting out in a minute. Let's go do a test. Actually, first we're going to delete the player from the scene, make sure the prefab is safe enough to date. Also, make sure the prefab has a certain amount of movement, so I'm going to set it to 1 on the Z axis. Then I'm going to delete the player and go build the game. I'll oh. see you guys in a minute. 
Okay, so I've built the game. Here is the editor, and here is the build version. We're going to use the editor as the host. So oh, it needs a spawn point still. So it spawns in a player object, which we've registered down here in the player prefab. And if I press oh, spacebar, oh. I'm going to move forward. Oh, I'm what? Here. Can I press uh, land host? Sorry, land client. I'm going to join, and there we are. Now if I press spacebar here, I move forward. But you notice there's one problem. Here I'm teleporting, which let's pretend that's my intended, you know, intended thing, is I teleport. Well, the network transform view is actually going to try smoothly syncing the position, which is what you want most of the time. For example, you know, just running around your game as a player. Well, that's, moving isn't teleport. that's pretty impressive. Ha. Huh. Oh, what? Y'all are just y'all entertain yourself in chat at this point. I don't know how to help y'all. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go. Actually, I don't want to take his code. I honestly don't care. If I press spacebar, I'm gonna be forward. And if I come over here and I press uh, land host, and that's my intended, you know, intended thing, is I teleport. Well, the network is nice actually going to try smoothly syncing the position, which is what you want most of the time. For example, you know, just running around your game as a player, most moving isn't teleporting, so you want to use the transform view like we're doing right now, and it'll be fine because it'll look better. But let's say, for example, you do want to teleport, then I'm going to show you the second alternative because you know, if you want to teleport and the player sees us move smoothly, then we're not really seeing the same thing, and it might break. You know, well, not the immersion, but it, it's not what you want. So I'll say if I leave, I go away, and I can join back in back at the start. I can move here. It's so not really far ahead. If I go back to here, you see me the distance. It's impressive how quickly that worked. Like, the fact, because there, there was a lot more involved in doing that in um, Unity's built-in system, so that's pretty impressive that that works that quickly. So yeah, it works, but I'm going to show you the alternative for if you actually want sudden movement rather than smooth movement. So for that, go over to the player prefab. We're going to remove the network transform, because we don't want that to sync our position, okay? Then we go back oh. into the script, and rather than uh, translating on the frame, we need to actually get the server to effectively teleport all our players. But the problem with that is we need that to be synced too. So we want to send a method to the server, and then get that server to then broadcast that to all the clients. And this allows okay, you to okay. validate on the server. We don't need any validation for this example, but I'm going to show you how you do that. So if we go over here, we want to make a method, so a private void, and it has to start with CMD. And it's a command, and then I'm going to move, for example, okay? Like so. And then to actually mark this as a command, we put the command tag for it. Pull this from a client to run it on the server, okay? Alright, we're gonna we're gonna write this part because it seems useful. Bam. Private void C D. So down here instead of this, we're actually gonna comment that out. And instead, I'm just going to call CMD move. And what that does is, I'm a client calling this command, which means that the server then runs this one. Okay. So okay. okay. Uh, why? I don't know why I'm refusing to write code in here. We're going to continue to do server. it. The server is then, well, this would be where you do, you know, validate logic here, you know? But then let's pretend we've got no validation. We just want to then say RPC move. Done. Uh, proceed to even write a comp. No, we're not typing code in there. Here we make another function called RPC move, and this is a client RPC. So call this from the server, and it runs it on. Whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. What? Okay. Yeah. But then let's pretend we've got no validation. We just want to then say RPC move. RPC. Down here we make another function called RPC move. What does RPC mean? And this is a client RPC. So call this from the server, and it runs it on all clients. Okay. Yep. RPC move. And this is I like how you like explain stuff that doesn't need to be explained, and then it's like, RPC. what the so frick is a client server, RPC? Runs it on all clients. Okay, you can't, as a client, call the method on other clients. You have to tell the server something, and the server decides, yeah, I want to tell all the clients to do something. So, okay, that makes sense. Still don't know what an RPC is, but I RPC move. Da -da -da. Client RPC. server obviously you gotta read i don't care enough to read the docs thank you very much i'm watching a youtube tutorial thank you if there's some validation then you do it here but then once you're happy that you know this command is what we should be doing then we say okay clients move so then the clients say okay uh let's go grab this whoops transform translate movement and just like this so the the flow goes you know every frame 
on my, on my client, if it's me, I'm going to check for input and then I'm going to tell the server I wish to move, okay? Then the server's going to validate logic and then say, okay, everyone move, okay? Then everyone receives this, all the clients, and they move their, their object. Now, the only problem with this, which comes in with validation, is that I could technically, you know, get a hacked client and move other players because, you know, this, this constraint is only because I coded it. Someone else could still connect and run some different code there, you know? At the end of the day, all validations have been on the server. So this is why you should actually check that the person requesting to move is the right person. Now, that'll take a bit longer and we're not going to get into those kind of scenarios in this video. This is meant to be simple. But okay, I'm going to write that comment there. Now, yeah, I want to try moving. I tell the server, the server's like, cool, everyone move, okay? And because we're using transform.translate and not async to transform component, they will teleport rather than smoothly moving on the other clients. So let's go give this a go. So I've built, I'm gonna join as a host, I'm gonna join as a client, and I'm gonna put this here and move, okay? So as I move, it's pretty pretty much instant, okay? I move forwards, I go over here, I move, I teleport forwards, and then obviously. How so as I move, it's pretty pretty much instant, okay? That's good, that's forwards, good, that's here, good. I teleport forwards, and then obviously, yeah, it's teleporting. Stop, join back, and I can start teleporting around again. Okay, so as I said, the thing that's happening, we'll go over it one last time in another video, is that we say, okay, does this object belong to me? If it doesn't belong to me, then I don't care, okay, return. Did I press the space key? If I didn't, return. Okay, so at this point, this thing belongs to me, and I press space key. Uh, Tell the server, uh, I wish to move. Um. The server receives this only. Okay, the server runs the logic for validation if you had any. Okay, and then the server's like, okay, everyone, move. I then call this method, which is RPC move. Because it's a client RPC, it actually calls it on all clients. Equally, there is a way to do target RPC, which is to call a method on a certain client rather than all. But we'll get into that in a different video. And then the clients all receive this method call, which then they all do their object. Now, what I meant, I'm still trying to figure. Wait. Imagine reading the Java doc for a C sharp Unity project. Okay. <laughs> If we had three players, it would also work. You, know, you could add another one. I can actually show that before we end the video. If I um, stop, okay, and go over here. Let's let's host. Then join as one client. So I'll be forward to the Equally, there's a way to do. Wait, I was gonna say. So I'm trying to figure out how. What? 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 Ah! What the frick is. The... What do you mean it's not a net? No, you don't know network yeah, behavior. I thought it was network behavior. What? Did I, did, I, did I spell it wrong or did I? Is it network behavior? I, I want to see the thing that. Oh, what? Hey, mon oh, no, so when did you change it to network? Net network. Net network. network behavior. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that. Yeah, I spelled that right. What is it? Uh, I don't know what your fit is. Uh, okay, I didn't see all this stuff was here. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Hey, am I missing something at the top of my document? As in, did he include something I don't have? Uh, uh, And we want to have a video of it. I'm gonna make more, they'll come in here too. It was actually down. So step two, we'll be creating a video. That's it. We're gonna need to do this demo. Okay. I don't really care. Wrong. I'll make it so demo. There it spawns in. Bad must be quick manager for doing so. We don't oh. the movement of the play script. Okay, we're gonna write a simple script to move the player. So. Yeah, no, he's only using Unity Engine. So, so it's the one. Only, um, uh, by default now, this object will uh, be sick. Da, 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 da. I know these are things that people always tend to delete, but I don't really know what they do, so I'm just gonna kind of leave them there for now. Because Unity always really seems to want them up there. But this looks flawless, and it's not having a fit with it, except this is having a fit with it. Namespace, client, RPC, attribute could not be found. What? What? <laughs> What? Are you... If I apply all, are you happy? No. Um... Key. We want to only do this method, okay? 
Let's just write the rest of the code he wrote finally. I know it's like at this point I'm upset that I'm doing it too, but okay, go away. I don't need you. I know what that does. Uh be gone, stood. I think. Cool. Uh we're gonna make our variable that we should have made. Da -da 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 -da. Wait, but there's no code. Uh, Noah, I don't know what color you're referring to at all, by the way. I saw you talking about something I highlighted earlier, but I also don't know what that was either, if that's related. Uh, variable nice. Private vector three. I didn't. Ca I did capitalize it. It's just it doesn't cool. Nice. We finally wrote the. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. What? Excuse me. Did he not? Oh, I don't ask. Do not. It's been there the whole time. I figured it out on my own and then realized that I just didn't see it. Please do not ask. How's this color? Username color. Uh, you've been. I thought you've been blue and they've been green the whole time. I don't know if that changed. I thought that's how it was. I don't know. And that allows us to access whether we have authority. So if we have authority, we follow if we don't have authority. Okay, we're gonna write this code now. Alright. Update. If we do not uh, has the authority, to, then we return to our homeland. I don't want to put stupid spaces in there. It's ugly. And if we do not input dot get key down dot key code dot space, we go back to we return to our homeland. And uh, this is the thing that gets put somewhere else later, anyways. Eating. And now this should actually work. Uh, oh, mm, I don't think this changes anything, but I'll change that to avoid. I don't think that changes. Just what? What? Oh, wow! I meant. Don't ask. Don't ask. I just. I just assumed the first part was right. I hate all three of you. My gosh. Y'all really couldn't put, like... I was gonna say, like, two and two together, but, like, literally just put one. Not even one and one, just one. The fact that, like, two of you heard an echo and the one of you didn't, and you're in a call together. Geniuses. My gosh. I appreciate at least that you aren't memeing, so that's nice. You go and build the game, we'll be able to move, but there's still a slight problem. Do, 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 Holding this command, which means that clients, okay, you have server. And then you just move the line of code down But effectively, they will tell me, I'm going to smooth I tell the server, so it's like, wait, what the? When was this thing here? Is that how it was originally? Transcend it, translate, move. And so he moves that down here. Uh, I don't, I don't know what that means. But we're gonna write it anyways. I have no idea what that means. 
and say, okay, everyone move. Okay, then everyone receives all the points and they move their, their object. Now, the only problem with this, which comes in with the validation, is that... Uh, let's, let's go figure it out. What does this, which I, I'm assuming it doesn't mean equal to or greater than, mean in C sharp. It's an operator that's a C sharp reference. That's big words. Gosh, that's terrifying. Input parameters on the side. Lambda body. Uh, that's like a, it's like a sheep baby. What? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Ethan. I'm sorry you can't hear my my, my VS code. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I have, like, the plugin that makes, like, every, it, it's, it, like, text-to-speech is all the code I write. I'm sorry, you can't hear that. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. And do I honestly care? Yes, I really do care. Am I gonna bother to figure it out? Not from this page. Stop saying lambda. I don't, give me, I want the baby answer. Give me the, no, give me the baby answer. Please just give me the baby answer. Stop. I just want the baby answer. Oh, 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 so much. I guess it's just a way to have a function that only does like one line of code. That's my assumption. Nice, that's my assumption. <laughs> All right, cool. That I could technically, you know, get is tell move forward. Everyone, I caught up to date on the code. Because we're using and not a sync transform component, they will teleport rather than smoothly move. Uh, don't I have to put like cmd move here or something? Longer, and we're not going to get into those yeah. scenarios in this bit. And I say host, and leave to me, then I don't care, I return. Server receives this, the space right, key, right? Okay, so at this point, this thing belongs yep, to me, and yep. I press the space key. Tell the server I wish to move. The server receives yep. this only, okay, the server runs the logic for validation if you had any, okay? And then the server's yep. like, okay, yep. everyone, yep. move. I then call this method, which is RPC move, because it's a client RPC, it actually nice, calls nice, all nice. clients. Equally, there's a way to do target RPC, which is to call a method on a certain client rather than all. But we'll get into that in a different video. And then the clients all receive this method call, which then they all move their object, okay? If we had three players, it would also work, you, know, you could add another one. I can actually show that before we end the video. If I um, stop, Okay, and go over here. Let's let's host. Then join his land points. I'll be forward a bit. I'll be forward a little bit. So I got another version of the game. I'm gonna join his land. Oh my gosh. Okay. Free. Okay. So okay. Really hard to show. <laughs> Flawless. So let's move forwards. You actually see me on all three clients moving forwards. It all syncs perfectly. Okay. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Any questions, feel free to ask down below. Any suggestions, also give those down below. If you like the video, then please leave a like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Of course, like, go. uh, subscribe. Nice. All right, uh, I wonder if this is even gonna work because it's still not happy with me, I don't think. So it has the player script. We're gonna apply all. Oh, is it, a, if I do, yoink out of existence and I hit, uh, go away. Uh, See, so you, you have the thing I want. You, you have, you have the player script, cool. Um, and the network manager exists in this scene somewhere in the void, I guess. Oh, uh, it does have the player, auto create player, spawn method random. I don't have a list of spawns, which he didn't add anyways. It doesn't recognize network behavior, which I feel like is kind of required. I sp... N -E -T. W O R K H A B I O. You are? It's you are, right? I'm not. I'm not absolutely insane. It is. I, I spelled network behavior right, right, right. I'm double checking this. So I feel like this is like the, the dumb. Okay. Yeah, that's how you spell network behavior. I. 
Uh, if y'all have any idea why it's well, any idea where to begin as to why it is not recognizing literally any of this. Let me hear it. Um, it seems like it's it's almost just like it's just none of the stuff is added in my opinion. That's what I'm. That's the vibe vibe I'm getting. Um, in the video he didn't tell me to do anything other than just add um mirror. I don't think I need to add the old multiplayer system from. Uh, Unity, which I know it... He said it's based off of... Uh... That's definitely not a problem that we're getting, but nice. Vecrator. Not the problem. Do I need to check... I don't... <laughs> Yes, I I don't know if that's sarcasm or helpfulness because I think that's exactly what this is saying. Honestly, I, I think that's a title. I, I didn't know it was the yeah. I, I I'm, unless you're either me and just reading what this thing says or you're actually explaining. Um, I really don't know what it means too much. I just know I just that's why I'm thinking it, it seems like mirror isn't installed properly or something. Um. But it should be, considering it has all the stuff here. Uh, uh, read me. Um, <laughs> you must rest. Ah, uh, I pause when I need to update. Wait, I thought I already restarted Unity since I got this. So I have restarted Unity since then. That didn't help. That's a lot of code. No, thank you. This is the stuff I don't like messing with. I hate stuff like this. I just want to write code and make game do the thing. set up like literally anything he just tells you to download it hmm. any ideas hit me with ideas if you got ideas i feel more helpless than i should quite frankly mainly just because i i don't do with stuff like this that's why I was just hoping it was spelling. So it doesn't recognize network behavior. Can we go to definition? Yeah, I think that's a problem that it doesn't know the definition. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, Noah, I, I, that make, I do understand that. Uh, 
here's since I since you want to help, I'll hit you with what these things say. So the first error that isn't going away is dangling components have unfulfilled dependencies. Unity engine dot GUI utility process event and then inputs. But the main one that it has over and over is assets the that's the player asset and it's saying. Uh, I don't know what error CSO 246 is, but it says the type or namespace network behavior cannot be found. Parentheses, are you missing a, are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference? And it repeats that for, instead of network behavior, it's client attribute, client, command attribute, command, client RPC attribute, and client RPC. So it's literally not getting access to any of the things I need. Jeez. Put your components back. Did I take the components? What do you mean component? Oh, oops. You mean put the components back? Are oh, you just memeing again? Never mind. Did you import the namespace? I was never told to import a namespace. Um, and he also doesn't seem to use a namespace because there's nothing at the top of his code. Okay, so hello, welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some okay. uh, link in the description to go to GitHub and find the. The only namespace he has is the you. Is a the trade. If I'm not mistaken, with what a namespace is. Which I've already had on. Okay, we go across the network. Hmm. How do you? How did you install Mirror? I flat out was just on Unity Asset Store. Mirror. Right there. Purchased well, was free, but. And it's already, and then I just installed it, and it, I imported it. I hit import, I guess. Well, I think it also ended up saying install later, but that's how I have mirror right here. But literally, his video doesn't show anything else other than just that. I guess I can... We can uh, pull up a new video. Let's say how to start using mirror in Unity. Uh, part one setup. In my little up is on the mirror band the ether. You can have a still just off on. It's not complete to one. Master. Here. So he downloads it off. Ask. No, we cannot. Seeing it, just folders. And what we really care about is a runtime folder. So runtime. you can see all these scripts here. These are going to be what makes up our mirror project. So that is just input. That is just basically importing it into your project. And as of this video, we're just going to go ahead and set up our network manager and our player prefab. We're going to go ahead and do that for now. See, he doesn't do anything either. He just slaps the assets in there. Why? Go into assets, mirror. I thought I already downloaded it. I mean, I, I know. Yeah, it's literally just the assets. That's all that they use. So, I don't know. I feel like people are going to have the same problem. Let's just say Unity Mirror Multiplayer Network Behavior Not. Found. Uh, no, I don't want Unity's documentation. That's not helpful. So here's this. So it says it's being depreciated. Here it's referring to the depreciated. So that's interesting. So this were, no, how do you feel about this? Because this is where it already seems like it's not recognizing it because it's being depreciated. Um, I, I, I guess whatever's left here that you know people, the people at Mirror are gonna make sure they keep things up to date. So I assume sticking with Mirror is not 
a problem, despite the fact it's using this network behavior. Because these videos were made in... Yeah, March of this year. So it's not been that long. Um... So how do I add it? Uh... Didn't help. Actually, I don't have to, I need to keep this blocked. Uh, I spelled mirror wrong. That probably is why that didn't come out. <laughs> Ethan, why are you here? I saw that. I see your message. Mm, oh, okay, okay. Mirror, hey, hey, mirrors page. Class network behavior. Base class, which will be inherited by scripts. None of this is helping. Uh. This thing has a network identity and it has a network transform. Uh, zero, because we're gamers. And then there's basically nothing else here except for a player script. Why is our player script not getting access to the thing it needs? <laughs> Actually, no, no, I'll, no. Noah, as much as I agree with quality over quantity, I will take his viewership. Yes, Ethan, I will put up with you for your viewership. Thank you very much for your... I appreciate... I appreciate you. You're, you're a fourth of the people here, and I appreciate that. Actually, one of them's probably myself monitoring on my laptop. So, you're a fourth or more of my viewership, and I appreciate that. I love you. I love you, Ethan. But now, like... Where is this from? How oh, is class would be narrated by zero? I don't know what it is. Will it like autofill stuff if I start like typing unity? Does. Okay. Actually, I actually. Guys, guys, I'm actually smart. Guys, I'm actually. Wait. Let's say it. Hey, you're looking at the docs. You scroll through the entire. Yeah. No, no, Ethan. I did look at it. I read the top. I read all. I read a good part of this. Realized it didn't help. And these are just modes and stuff from it and properties of network tag, which only matters if I have network working. None of this helps if I don't have it on there. Okay. I. I but I got this. I'm smart now. Watch me. Mirror, examples, pong, scripts, player. I'm. Trust me. If this changes something, I'm going to quit game dev. We're gonna get rid of this apparently, because now nobody, literally not even the example is using it, which means I'm not gonna use it. Are you happy? 
Why are you not happy? Network manager? You're... Where are you in, where are you getting this from? Why do you have it and I don't? Okay. If this fixes this, again, I'm going to quit game dev. Make sure it's open here. You're deleted, go away. Save. Minimize, play. No, okay, that didn't fix it. Uh-huh. Um. How? How? There's literally nothing different here it has the namespace but i i i that it's clearly referring to the ex mirror examples pong okay let's mirror examples pong so it's a folder it's it's just like grabbing everything out of this folder but no <laughs> None of these have anything useful. They just have network behavior. That's exactly what I have. I have literally no clue. I, I wasn't thinking this I'd get stuck this early on. I thought I'd just be following the tutorial. Uh, hey, wait, I got an idea. I bet you everyone else is having this. Actually, I don't bet everyone else is having this problem. Where are the comments? Aren't the comments up here? Why are the comments not up here? We're just going to bink. Bonk. Com I thought the comments, I guess they're only moved. Actually, yeah, I'm going to keep this. Make sure to put at the top using mirror. I was trying to get the network behavior, couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. What do you mean? How is his working without saying using mirror? So, of course the first comment says this. Look at me. Am I a big boy yet? Let's here, we'll bring y'all back to watch this. Absolutely amazing. Using mirror. I mirror. Mirror. If this fixes it, I'm not quitting game dev. Oh, oh, <gasps> it fixed most of them. I don't know what this problem, I don't know what your problem here is, but, but, but yeah, let's go. Get out of the way, go, go away. No one loves you, go away, bye. Okay, so we fixed most of them. We did it. Uh, Alberta, uh, da, da, da. The, that thing is already, um, that's, I'm not using Unity's version. Mirror has it as well since it's being depreciated from Unity. Which I just found, I found out that. I don't know what this one is, the, what fit it's having here. But I found out, I have using Mirror now, which fixed that. So hooray, we fixed that. Um. Uh. Uh. Does anybody else... Yep. I like how he doesn't even come in with... Maybe this is a more recent problem? Yeah. Okay, now we just need to figure out what the, what the problem is here. And then we're back to working. Um, what? Okay, wait. Let's go back to his code. Yoink. Manager, it won't say play free time. Let's go back and make sure I didn't type something wrong at the bottom. Cool. 
every frame. Oh. Whoops. Client RPC. Client RPC. Oh, uh, lowercase, lowercase. Yep, 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 yep. I, I saw myself capitalizing it a lot earlier. Uh, is that good? Are we good? Do, do, do. Please, 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 please. <gasps> oh. <sighs> that was excitement. Play. child. My child, why do you not move? <laughs> now, now Ethan's just making program. <laughs> when you try to vent, but you, you're a crewmate. Illegal access exception. I like that. When you go to soccer field but sink, but a sinkhole consumed it, no such field exception. I'll Oh my gosh. Alright. Um. So everything's working. Oh wait, no. Literally everything's not working. Everything's not having a fizzy fit. That's where we got to. Uh, did we... So we have these communicating. We have the... T oh, oh, oh. We did that. I, I got it. I got it. If anybody told me, nobody told me. Okay, cool. I can say that I came up with it because nobody told me. I forgot to change uh, the movement. <laughs> Don't ask. But now, I should be able to play a video game. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Goodbye, my son. Go to Walmart. Bring me Hamburger Helper. So his spherical sun left in the distance. Blank hit space while waiting for him to turn into a single pixel. Wonder I'm assuming proportionally this is gonna get long take longer and longer, get smaller. I wonder if I can actually get it down to one pixel. Y'all probably can't even see it on the stream, I still can. We're down to six pixels? Four pixels. Oh, yeah, that's four pixels. Three pixels. Uh, no, actually, no, now we're in five, four, three. Oh, let's back up to four, three. Okay, no, I think that's actually four now. And we're down to a two by two of pixels. Uh, three, we're down to a three, it's no longer a two by two. Two, two, two pixels side by side. I was right, it's one pixel, it's a single pixel. My son must disappear. Goodbye, son. Do not return until you have the hamburger helper. Is that single pixel? That is single pixel. Okay. Be gone, of my son. You must disappear. Into the void realm you go. Please. Please disappear. You do not have the hamburger I require. You do not get to exist. Will it ever stop rendering this one pixel? <laughs> oh, I just, you just, <laughs> the noise when your keyboard, your keyboard makes when it falls down the stairs, the noise when your keyboard makes chasing after a squirrel, 
Why he gallops along on his wooden horse? And now I've been clipped. I appreciate it. It's not gone. My hand is exhausted. Please. Go away. You do not have the hamburger. Oh, wait. He got even smaller. Now is he one pixel? I was looking away. I was looking away. He's gone. I missed it. I went to read chat as I was pressing buttons, and now my son's gone, and I I missed his disappear his disappearance. I, I didn't get to say good. I didn't get to say goodbye. I'm kind of upset. I didn't actually see when the last pixel disappeared. I'm not crying. <laughs> Son. <laughs> Please bring me back. Bring me back the hamburger helper. <laughs> hey, what's good? He's back. Bring me the hamburger. What did, what did Noah go to sleep or something? Okay. That entire scene was because I'm exhausted and I, I think I, I, my effort is gone. Are we done with this video now, actually? Media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you help me out by following on any of those. That's right, because I subscribe, liked and subscribed. Welcome back to another unit tutorial today. In the video. Someone mute this dude. Okay. This video, I'm gonna be showing you guys what I've been up to in my own game that I've been working on. So I'm working on a multiplayer game using Mirror. Obviously, alongside this, I'm actually making some tutorials about Mirror. Those of you who want to make multiplayer games. So yeah, I'll be showing wow, you guys what I've been on, showing you the code, how I've set things up, and I hope you guys learn something from this. And obviously, feel free to ask me down below for any specific things you want videos on, so I can make a video showing you about how the lobby system works, how players you know get set to the other scene, and then how they get set up with input and everything in the camera. So yeah, let's jump into it. So I guess the place to start is cool, the menu. Cool. So when you start, well, first of all, actually, we've got the network manager widget, which I should. Uh, what is this about? Multiplayer lobby is what it's called. Okay. I assume we're gonna set up a simple FPS as well. I guess the goal for this stream, now that we actually, I guess, I guess we really didn't have much of a problem other than just the fact that he didn't tell us to use mirror. I feel like it should be straightforward about just using the code, like just coding and stuff. So I guess we can like, we can, I can definitely get through this video at least. Oh, uh, we'll probably skip chat. Just the next video. Lobby, main menu. Okay, okay. Readying up. Start game. He's really, he's really going at it for setting up for a game. And I, it seems. I guess, I guess here's the best part about this. It seems like he's not talking much about movement syncing, which means, quite frankly, it might already be set up to just work like fast. Just, like, I can just sync movement and ta-da, I have a game. Maybe that's just how well Mirror works. So, huh? Yeah, start. Um, let's, let's start in there. So, this stores the minimum amount of players, because by default, the network manager stores the max number of players, but I also need a min before the game can start. And then in reference to the menu scene, it's actually a string, but because they've used the scene attribute that they've added that for themselves in Mirror, um, it's in Mirror, yeah. Uh, the scene attribute actually allows you to drag in a scene instead of a string, and it just reads it as a string. So, if you actually go back over to Unity, you see down there for the menu scene, I've actually dragged in uh, the actual scene reference, and then what it's done is it's got the name off that. So, it's actually good. It, it stops you having to type in the scene name manually and getting it wrong. And Wait, what? It's the actual scene record. It just reads it as a string. So if you actually go back over to Unity, you see down here for the menu scene, I've actually dragged in uh, the actual scene reference. And then what it's done is it's got the name off that. So it's actually good. They write, it stops you having to type in the scene name manually and getting it wrong. Okay. And then it has uh, two different player prefabs. So it has one for the room and one for the game. Now, even the one in the game, it's not the player that you control. It's just simply a, I, can, I guess, representation of you. Because, for example, let's say we destroy the player's object and they die. If we destroy this, then we get problems or the player disconnects. Or there's different things that can happen. So I need an object that just kind of exists and stores, for example, the player's score and other things in their name. So I have the room player. 
the room player um, actually handles some UI. I'm probably going to change this, to be honest. I don't quite like how this works, but uh, when I first died, this was, you know, the first like, solution that came to my mind, and it works. Because right now, when I spawn in the player, if we go to... Oh crap, this is a reaction channel. I have to be reacting. Wow. Resources. The room player. The room player actually has the lobby UI as a child. Uh, here, okay. So this uh, lobby UI is a child of the room player, and what it says is, it says, when we uh, start on, on authority, so basically when our um, player starts on this computer, then tell the server what my name is and set the UI active. So that means that for every player, there's some UI, even though it's disabled, it's still there and it doesn't really make sense to be. So I'm going to shuffle this around a bit to have it have the UI separated, but it works. Because right now we can uh, set the display name, and when the display name changes, uh, everyone updates it over here. So it goes over all the text mesh pros, so there's four of them. Uh, these four, like waiting for players, gets changed to be the player's display. I wasn't the same that at all. I started thinking about RAM player starts on this computer, then tell the server what my name is and set the UI active. So that means that for every player, there's some UI. Oh, um, actually handle some UI. I'm probably going to change this, to be honest. I don't quite like how this works, but uh, when I first died, this was, you know, the first like, solution that came to my mind, and it works. Because right now, when I spawn in the player, if we go to uh, resources, the room player. The room player actually has the lobby UI as a child. Uh, here, okay. okay. So this uh, lobby UI is a child of the room player, and what it says is, it says, player when has we the UI. Um, start on, on authority, so basically when our um, player starts on this computer, then mm -hmm. tell the server what my name is and set the UI active. So that means that for every player, Output. I'm assuming that's a function from mirror, and then whatever that is. There's some UI, even though it's disabled, it's still there, and it doesn't really make sense to be. So I'm going to shuffle this around a bit to have it have the UI separated, but it works. Because right now we can uh, set the display name, and when the display name changes, uh, everyone updates it over here. So it goes over all the text mesh pros, so there's four of them. Uh, these four, like waiting for players, gets changed to be the player's display name. And then there's actually text next to that for saying, you know, is ready. Oh, okay, and then it okay. sets it to be green if they're ready, or red, and then not ready. Okay. So that updates every time this function update display gets called. Cool, and update cool. display gets called whenever um, someone changes their ready status or their display name. Now, ideally, when they update their ready status, I only update the ready text. And when they update the display name, I only update the name. Uh, right now, we update both every time. It's not like oh, is it a function ready status, handle display name changed? I wonder if there might be a way to tell by colors whether or not that's a default to Unity. Uh, I don't care enough. I only update the ready text, and when they update the display name, I only update the name. Uh, right now, we update both every time. It's not ideal. It's still it's absolutely fine. It doesn't cause any problems. But you know, for the sake of efficiency and just clean the code, I should probably separate that out. And then uh, here are some commands. So remember, commands are called from a client to the server. So as a client, I say command set display name and tell it why I want to be called. And the server doesn't really need to do any validation because um, actually, this is where you put validation for whether their names, you know, maybe inappropriate, or whatever. You check, you know, does it follow those guidelines? You know, maybe you don't know like, swear words or something like my that. My name is Sir Biffy, and no one else can have it. But for now, I don't care. Whatever the player says they want to be called, I set them to be called that. And because this is a sync bar. What actually happens is it syncs it with all clients, and all clients call this function. Also, I'm curious. I haven't even checked. What does my audio even sound like when I talk over the video? So, them. so when he's talking, I'm talking, I'm also talking, and I'm testing, and I'm testing. Okay, so it sounds beautiful. <sighs> When I uh, change ready status, or so it's just like that again here. When I ready up, if if is ready, then is not ready. So it basically toggles, right? If I press ready, it goes on, off, on, off. And then um, whenever that changes, keep in mind this is on the server. This is a command. Commands only run on the server. I then, in my game manager, or sorry, my network manager, I then check. Okay, go over every player and see if they are ready to start. Because is ready to start will say, okay, well we're not ready to start if we've got not got enough players. We're also not ready to start if any player is not ready. But if we've got enough players and everyone is ready, then return true. And then handle ready to start basically will um, toggle the start game button for the leader. If well, if you're the leader, then it toggles it for you. Okay, and then at the end of the day, when they press uh, start game, it then says start game. Now, this is where I should actually validate, uh, you know, validate is lobby owner. Because right now, technically, anyone could call this command, um, and we just say, okay, we'll trust them to start the game. Now, you know, when it comes to cheaters and video games, you don't really care about those cheaters that join your lobbies and start games for you, you know, it's a bit dumb. It's never gonna happen, I mean, then again, it probably will happen, but um, just because people like to, you know, prove that they can do stuff. So I'm gonna validate here at some point that the lobby owner is the person that's starting the game. Because um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if someone... All right, guys, welcome back to Hacker XX six X X nine. Today we're gonna be hacking our uh, um our uh, our uh, Minecraft, and today we're gonna make it so that I'm going to I'm going to start I'm gonna start the game, despite the fact people are not ready to start the game. All right, here we go. Ha! Uh, you see that guy? He hadn't hit ready yet. I can't believe I started the game. Genius. I'm tired. Everyone managed to hack and make the start game button interactable, so long as when they press it, it you know, stops on the server, so it's like, no, you can't start the game. Okay? That was a lot. Let's move on to the next part. Okay, so the player menu, we have the input field for the name and a button to confirm. I'm not going to go through the actual saving of the name, but what happens is when you do confirm, when you save the name, we then turn off the name input panel and we turn on the landing page panel. Okay? So, uh, I'm just going to go hide this for now. Also, I'm just watching this for content, by the way. My, my own information. 
I actually, since we're, since I'm planning on making Graham War with this, I don't plan on actually making a lobby, so. I, mean, I don't plan on making, like, a menu. Any, there's there's going to be, like, no UI in Ram War. It's all going to be in-game. Just about is what I'm planning on. So. <sighs> I, I hate UI. I hate, I hate making UI. And I ain't going to use I'm it. Here with so. Three words, so Calls main menu host lobby, which I'll show in a minute. Join calls. Um, actually, also when you join, you don't immediately join. You have to say, you know, what lobby do you want to join? So I have this other thing called enter IP address, uh, where you put in your IP address, and when you're done, there is a button. The button calls join lobby menu dot join lobby. Uh, let's look at the host one first. So, let's. Yeah, I've turned on so many different panels. I'm just going to turn that off. Turn this off. And go back to here for the main menu. So, the main menu quite simply just calls the network manager and says start host, and then disables itself because then it goes from there. Um, the actual lobby UI. is on the player, so we don't need to activate it because it gets activated itself, so that will probably change, as I said, I'm going to change around how that UI works. Um, so it's really easy to start hosting, you just call start host, and then if we actually go to the entire IP address, the join lobby menu, uh, I actually have some events in the network manager for certain things happening, like the client connecting and the client disconnecting. And the thing is, if the client disconnects while they're trying to join a lobby, what it actually means is, it usually means that they've uh, failed to join, because that, that could be because uh, there's no, no one hosting the IP, for example, or the game's full, or there might be different reasons why you get disconnected when you're trying to connect. So I say, when that happens, reactivate the join button. I don't want them to be able to spam it, so I turn it off. When they try and join, when they try and join, I turn off the button. But as soon as they fail to join, then I reactivate it so they can try again. Um, obviously, I could have some text pop up here saying like, "Hey, that IP address is incorrect, or something went wrong, or whatever." And then finally, when someone actually does connect, so, so sorry, when you connect to the server successfully, okay, on client connected, then uh, we re-enable the button in case you know later on you go back to the menu and it's still disabled. Now that should never happen, but I thought it's still a good idea to do that. Um, and then we disable ourselves, so we get rid of the lobby UI, and we also disable the landing page panel, which is the same as over in the main menu script. If I look over here, just like how we dis uh, disable the landing page panel, we do that here too, because all we need after this is the lobby UI, which is on the player, and that leaves us with the lobby UI. So the lobby UI is currently in the room player. As I said, you know, we set the name text and the ready text and the game button. It's all that stuff. Um, the only other difference is we also have the game player, which is the same but has less stuff. Uh, it adds itself to a list when it starts existing and removes itself when it stops existing. Uh, you better, you better make an escape menu and a scoreboard. Nice, they came with all. No, I know, yes, there's gonna be an escape menu. I'm saying no UI for like starting games and stuff. Literally imagine Ram War Minecraft, like. I guess you're probably gonna want, I'm gonna want like a very, very basic UI for like, I guess, you're not gonna wanna pick what online server you're joining in first person. I'm assuming you're saying I can't imagine Minecraft. Um, that's just that's just too bad on your part. Um, as well as don't destroy and load because this is the version of the player in the actual game. So as I go between levels, I don't want to get rid of this object. I want it to keep existing. It's going to store as I said the name and the score and everything. Whereas the room player, uh, I don't want to exist between scenes because it should be destroyed as soon as um, as soon as we leave the menu, we get rid of this. I actually have some code in the network manager. Um, that's, so we store room players and we store game players. And what should happen is when we actually uh, disconnect, we remove ourselves from the game players and then down here somewhere. When we go to the game, I loop over all room players and then I actually. Um, spawn in the gameplayer prefab and destroy the room player connection. And then what happens is when they get instantiated, they start existing and then they add themselves to that, uh, that uh, store as the name and the score and everything. Whereas the room player, uh, I don't want to exist between scenes. It's all that stuff. Um, the only other difference is we also have the game player, which is the same but has less stuff. Uh, it adds itself to a list when it starts existing and removes itself when it stops existing, um, as well as don't destroy and load because this is the version of the player. You didn't speak English there, Ethan. I can't read that in the actual game. So as I go between levels, I don't want to get rid of this object, I want it to keep existing, it's going to store as I said the name and the score and everything. Whereas the room player, uh, I don't want to exist between scenes because it should be destroyed oh, okay. as soon as um, as soon as we leave the menu, we get rid of this. I actually have some code in the network manager. Um, that's, so we store room players and we store game players. And what should happen is when we actually uh, disconnect, we remove ourselves from the game players and then down here somewhere. When we go to the game, I loop over all room players and then I actually um, spawn in the game player prefab and destroy the room player connection. And then what happens is when they get instantiated, they start existing and then they add themselves to that list. So every player actually knows who else is who, who else are the other game players, as well as the room players if they need to. And then we can also add later on maybe spectate players or like you know, other players that can join our game but aren't actually playing the game and they get treated differently. They have different objects representing them, they have different logic being run. They don't store maybe display name or, or score. Maybe display name they do but not score. Um, and one thing I do is because they set their name in the room player, they need their name in the game player. So I actually somewhere here I set the game player's display name to be the room player's display name so that actually gets uh, transferred across. So if I end up displaying the name in the game, it's still the same as the name they chose um, back in the lobby. One thing to note is when you spawn things in on the network and on other clients, you need to have them registered. So the way you 
you do that typically is if you go to the network manager, there is a list here of spawnable, uh, registered spawnable prefabs. Problem is if you have a game with lots of things being spawned in, like if you're making Pong, for example, you just need the ball and the, the paddles. That's, that's all you need. But if you're making a game with lots of things, like in my game, I'm going to be spawning players, maybe different player characters, different projectiles, different attacks, whatever. There's a lot of things to spawn in, and mm -hmm. it'll be a pain to manually add stuff to this list, remove it, and you know make sure everything's in there and not forget things. So Correct. when I used to use Photon, the way you did it, Photon to register things, is you put them all in a, in a resources folder, and they all got loaded from that resources folder. So I've actually written some code to do that. I've got resources folder, and then inside that I've got spawnable prefabs where I have the player, uh, actual game object, you know, the physical player and scene, as well as the room player and the game player. And then I also have some other systems that need to be spawned in by the server. The server needs to spawn in the round system and the player spawn system because they are network entities. They exist now. I originally had it on server only because I'm thinking, you know, the round system, the server should be the one that owns it and handles it. But the problem is that then won't give any client callbacks, and the actual clients need callbacks from these things to know when to, for example, start doing the countdown UI and all these other things that they need to do. So then the player spawn system. If we go over here, what it does is it um, over here when UI. You want to make the UI like, like, do you want to like, as in design the graphics for the UI, or do you want to like program at the Unity side of the UI? Both of them, I'm programming wise, I'm interested to let you mess with that, despite the fact it's very probably going to be very intertwined with everything I'm personally doing since I'm doing the networking system. Uh, no is not a proper answer, Ethan. No is not a proper answer. <laughs> Just design. Okay, yes. Uh, that's one thing I'm also interested in helping with. Um, honestly, I, I'm saying that meanwhile I absolutely hate designing UI. So yeah, you know, sure. I'm down to let you dis 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 try and design that. Uh, what do you have in mind? Not like, obviously, don't tell me what you're gonna, like, don't tell me graphic-wise, like, I'm not gonna be able to follow that describing. I'm interested, um, what, what menus and buttons do you think we're gonna need? Hit me, just what, what you think we're gonna need, because I know there's certain things we do and don't. The server, when it starts on the server, right, so only on the server, we listen to, um, on server ready. So on server ready is not what it seems. It's not when the server's ready. It's actually when a, a client is ready and it's pulled on the server. So all the events in uh, Mirror, they, the on server and on client is where they're called. So they're called on the server when someone is ready. We spawn their player. So to spawn their player, we just effectively say spawn a game object for the or spawn the player prefab at a certain place and then spawn. Oh, thank you. Button on the left and button in the center. Couldn't ask for anything more. You know. You know, I can respect that. I can respect that I'm not gonna get helpful stuff at 3.30. I'll go back to watching my video and barely listening. Spawn it on the server, the player instance. But then we have to serve. When this starts on the server, right? So only on the server, we listen to um, on server ready. So on server ready is not what it seems. It's not when the server's ready. It's actually when a, a client is ready and it's called on the server. So all the events in uh, Mirror, they, the on server and on client is where they're called. So they're called on the server when someone is ready. We spawn their player. So to spawn their player, we just effectively say spawn a game object for the, or spawn the player prefab uh, at a certain place and then spawn it on the server, the player instance. But then we have to actually, well, we don't have to, but we are giving it um, authority to the connection. So whoever uh, this, this on server ready will tell us who readied up with a network connection. And by passing that in as a second parameter, it gives them authority over the object. So the server has to spawn in your player object for you, but then it can pass over authority by you oh to gosh, when someone I... is readied. We spawn their player. So to spawn their player, we just effectively say, client is where they're okay. called. So they're called on the server when someone is readied. We spawn their player. So to spawn their player, we just effectively say, spawn a game object for the, or spawn the player prefab at a certain place, and then spawn it on the server, the player instance. But then we have to actually, well, we don't have to, but we are giving it um, authority to the connection. So whoever uh, this, this on server readied will tell us who readied up with a network connection. And by passing that in as a second parameter, it gives them authority over the object. So the server has to spawn in your play object for you, but then it can pass over authority to you so that it's like, you can then move it and, you know, do all the commands and everything from it. It's your object. So that's how that works. And then it also stores the next index so that when the next player joins and wants to get spawned, they don't spawn in the same place. They spawn at a different place because we've got an array of, oh, sorry, a list of spawn points. And then um, the spawn points themselves can't really exist um, in the editor. If I actually show you, if I go to the scene and spawn points, I've got these different spawn points. I've given them some... Uh, rendering here on the gizmos just so I can easily see them. What they do is, on a wake, they add, I've got these different spawn points, I've given them some uh, rendering here on the gizmos just so I can easily see them. What they do is, on a wake, they add themselves well, as a spawn point, and when they get removed, they destroy themselves as a spawn point. 
okay? And all that does is adds it to a list, which is static, and removes it from the list. And then when it gets added, it's then ordered. So what happens is all these four game objects that have player spawn points on, when they start existing, they add themselves to that list. And when they stop, they remove them. The reason I can't just have them referenced uh, normally is these spawn points exist in the map, whereas the round system or the player spawn system does not exist in that. It doesn't. It is spawned in as a prefab, so it needs a way to actually get these things. And obviously, I've only shown you it with two players connecting. It actually it goes to spawn point mm, zero okay. here, then it goes to spawn point one, and then oh that's three, so it goes spawn point two, and spawn point three, and these little green lines show you uh, the actual direction in which you're going to face when you spawn. Okay, so I can I can modify these whenever I like, and I don't have to go back and change anything anywhere else. I just have to move where this point is and then save it, and then now this player spawns over here. Okay. Okay, so for the final script, we're going to be covering the round system. So the round system, when it starts existing on the server, cares about also when someone's ready on the server, and then unsubscribes when they uh, when this gets destroyed. It then checks every time this happens that um, the number of players that are ready, if it doesn't equal the number of players that there are, then returns. So only once everyone is ready, uh, do we then enable our animator. So that would then uh, do this. So round system animation. It then goes three, two, one. Okay, then as soon as it gets to here, where it starts saying begin, Ew. it then calls. Imagine having a countdown system in a, a multiplayer FPS. I prefer just starting the game and requiring someone in game to count down three, two, one. Definitely optimal. Let's so start round. Start round. It's a server callback, so it only gets called on the server. Then it tells all the clients, "Hey, remove this from your input manager." Now, input manager is something I've written. <laughs> chat is ecstatic in agreeing with me. Thank you, chat. Um, it just stores uh, different action maps that should be enabled and disabled. I'll quickly scroll through it, but I'm not going to explain how it works. Um, something I came up with. If you guys, you know, want to know about this, then uh, it's just some way that I've. Uh, figured out. I mean, maybe there's a better way, but I couldn't find anything online for enabling and disabling certain input maps. So you see over here, sorry, action maps. I've got the player action map, which is for move, look, jump, attack, so on, whatever else I had here. Then developer is like a different layer. The developer is not the same as the player. So when I disable the player, I can still use my uh, console commands, like input, basically. Um, because this is uh, done by string, uh, the only way I can seem to find it is by string. Because uh, this is called player, I then here say action map names.player, which is a constant I made, so I don't misspell it anywhere. I say basically remove player, and that means that um, in that dictionary up here, when I add and remove to it, it checks how many is left of that particular thing. So if there is one or more, then you can't use the input, but if there is zero, then you can. So when we spawn the player in on the spawn system, we actually add a uh, player. So that means disable all player input, but then I actually- I was about to comment and say, this guy's talking way too fast and I'm not following all this. And then I realized I'm watching a video, to increased speed at three. Um, override and say, except from look, enable looking, okay? So when you spawn, you can look around, but you can't do anything else. And then the round system says, okay, um, when the round starts, then remove player, which effectively unlocks all of their input so they can all move, okay? Um, and I think that's it, actually. Yeah, so okay. also actually when the animation finishes, there's one more event over here. When it's completely done, which is countdown ended, and you'll see on countdown ended, we just disable the animator so that it's not just left on and still doing stuff. When it's disabled, it's then not wasting resources. And yeah, that's it. Um, there's obviously more code in the project than this, but this is pretty much what I've got done so far. It's the main stuff, and it's how the game works to the point where you can, as I said, go to the menu, host a game, join the lobby, ready up when you're both ready up to host and start the game. Then you go to the game, you spawn in, and you can't move. Then it gets three, two, one. Then you can move. That entire thing, that's what I've shown in this video, uh, quite briefly. Um, but yeah, if you guys want more videos like this, feel free to let me know down below. If you guys want me to cover anything that I've shown in this video Please. in more detail and make an actual separate video for it, then feel free to you know, let me know down below, and I'll definitely make videos on that kind of stuff. Uh, ask any questions about mirror multiplayer, or whatever. You know, Please join our Discord server. Well. Uh, but yeah, if you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to find my patrons. Special thanks to. J this is open source. I can totally just uh, Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, GitHub. Oh, repo for my multiplayer tutorials. Look at that. Uh, is it the only one? Is Wizards in Training here? I am assuming it's going to be in the one. Bingo. Bongo. Materials, preset settings, or tutorials. Uh. Chat events on our ship. So is it? What is this one called? What? Wait. Oh, so this is a different video. So he, how to make how to make wizards and training behind the scenes, and then how to make. Okay, so this one's lobby. So he didn't upload this one in particular. As he was just showing off some stuff. So, basic. Uh, what the frick did you just say? I don't know what you're saying, Ethan. I can't help you. Um, so this one doesn't have the code, which makes sense, because it's his game. Did he respond here? Expect content on this soon, then. Okay. I'm assuming that's what comes up for lobby and stuff. I'll probably watch chat while I'm, like, lying in bed or something tonight, because I'm probably not going to, like, code that one, but I'd like to hear what it says. Since it's... Oh, wait, no. This will be the next video? Wait. 
No, wait. Let's play a lobby. Chat. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I just watched this one. It just doesn't say I have yet. Jason Square. Bing, bing. Okay, now I've watched it. Nice. So, I'm probably not going to watch this one on stream. I'm tough. Okay, I'm done. Don't help me help you. Got it. Uh, it's completely understand. I, I will not do that. Um, so I won't watch this on stream. This is probably where we'll start back up tomorrow. This lobby, lobby, lobby. <laughs> Spawning in players. What? What? What is? Yeah. I don't need that. I don't need that. Oh, I'm gonna do Camera movement, basic combat. Okay, so he does have, he, he has a full game in here. These are, uh, was, okay, so that's back to wisdom training behind the scenes. How to make, how to make, how to make, how to make, how to sync events. Okay. So yeah, we'll continue with that tomorrow. Off stream content? What do you mean? It's not content if it's off stream. All right. This is just gonna consist of me watching videos if I continue with this. So we're not gonna continue with this. We'll close that so we can find that easier later. Bam. Uh, let's just make sure we even set this up properly. We're gonna close that. Let's just uh, let's just double check that I even have this working because I don't. I really honestly don't know if I do. Dink dink. Save. Do not maximize on play. Actually, no. Yeah, you can maximize on play. File. Build and run. Can we do a poll? You should keep streaming or not go for it go for it do a stream a, a poll how do i do a do i have to do a poll or what how do i do i don't know how to do a poll chat settings uh, um, kind of like exclamation mark poll is that a thing we're just gonna try it yes you poll okay poll Yep, I did it, poll. Uh, say yes. Say... Yes. Or no for continue stream. Keep in mind, continue stream is going to solely consist of me probably watching the next video at high speed. Because I just, I don't want to, like, skip a video. Because generally, anytime I skip a video, they're like, Ah, oh, yeah, you, you know that thing we did last time? Yeah, you didn't do it. I don't know how to do an actual poll, so I'm not going to. You guys can just respond. Wait, where's the... I don't know how to set up a poll, you bingleless berry. I don't know how. I don't... It's... I hate you. You know, if I don't... I'm, I'm honestly gonna just take that. Take you being a you being a pain is just counting as three no's. So no, we want a poll. I, if you don't tell me how to make a poll, it's not gonna happen. And if you don't tell me how to make a poll, I'm not gonna continue the stream. So help me. Also, I didn't even. F oh man. Uh, what scenes? What pong? What? What do you mean? Oh. It's like, what's your problem? It's because it's building the wrong scene. Build and run. Multiplayer tests, builds. I have no idea what any of this is. Select folder. Are you okay now with the, what I've done, please? Ethan, you're getting one last chance. You tell me to press the poll button. Which obviously, if I knew there was a poll button, I would press it. You're going to lose your chances. You're going to lose your privileges. All right, we have a game. Uh, allow access. So I go dink, dink, move forward a little bit. Uh, you 
go away or play. We're gonna join localhost. Beep. Hey, look, there we both are. And now, if I go ding, 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 ding. Oh, they're touching. So cute. I just looked it up. It says click the create. Okay, then I might not have access. You might need to be affiliated to have access to that then. Because there's not a create new poll button. In the dashboard, I, I don't, what's the dash? I don't think I have access to the dashboard down here and here. If I go, the, it's not gonna be in the creator dashboard because that's like for everything else. Yeah, that ain't, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not messing with this. Also, if you said anything in chat since it's in the dashboard, I can't use it. Let's go. Okay. All right. I'm ending the stream because of you, Ethan. Also, look. The game is working flawlessly. Now they're both going to go get Hamburger Helper together. That's how we end the stream. We send them both to get Hamburger Helper. Goodbye to him. Goodbye to him. Goodbye. Hamburger helper, you go. Goodbye. You go to watch the. You go to get me hamburger helper. To the toys. Goodbye. And they're gone. Nice. And they died getting me hamburger helper. A valiant death, to be sure. Okay. Get to screw that. I don't watch more. And save. Flawless. Yep, keyboard falling down the stairs again. Alright. So. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it a lot. Even the people, like obviously the people I know and to, in case there was a person or so I didn't know. Thank you all. I do really appreciate the watching. I enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed at least part of this even if it was just the, the keyboard falling down the stairs and now that i actually got started on multiplayer i will hopefully keep working on this on stream and possibly off stream as well slightly depending on parts to basically get this working i think my plan is uh, i gotta see what the tutorial has in store um i might just honestly make like a ripoff version of ram war Essentially, like, set up a fake scene for the, like, hub, and then a fake scene for, like, in-game, and then just see if I can get movable characters with WASD, and then just, like, have, like, a pressure plate, like a, like a trigger box that essentially just starts game with whoever's there, and spawns you in it. Just to make sure I have, like, the basics working. Um, and then get some, like, basic stats, like set up in various places not exactly sure what all this is going to consist of but honestly it seems like after i get through this tutorial with these videos i'll probably watch through them all um before i do my own stuff just because content uh for me to consume and understand how stuff works um then i'll probably just start working with um bingo bongo's movement system because why not? We can just get a game working. We can honestly, if we just slap in that movement system and uh, my gun system, we can at least have a FPS, which will be fun. <sighs> That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Good progress. Really good progress tonight. Just to, just with how well that works, the fact that it updates so fast and it's so quick to set up movement between client and not, you know, client and server. It's pretty awesome. So. I want to stop rambling now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a ton of fun. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.